Hi, dear students. Today we will explain our new chapter, which is management of quality. This chapter will be uh, explained all uh, in our uh, PowerPoint. So this PowerPoint, not only for the online lecture, it is uh, for uh, uh, the whole chapter. Again, it is for the whole chapter. Um, we explained before that uh, quality is an important concept that must be implemented in all functional areas. So quality is an important concept uh, that must be implemented in all functional areas inside organizations. We concern with mainly uh, three main functions inside organization, which are marketing, operations, and finance. Marketing, operations, and finance. Therefore, you will find that the uh, three functional areas will implement quality concepts inside their strategies. So the marketing strategy will reflect the concept of or the quality standards and operations strategy will reflect the operations standard as the uh, quality standards again the operations strategy will reflect the quality standards and finance strategy will reflect the quality standards in chapter 2 we explained uh, the competitive priorities uh, or uh, strategic priorities or competitive advantage um, mainly five uh, types both to quality, delivery, flexibility, and service. Uh, we must uh, remember that our uh, main concept is quality is one of the competitive priorities that is uh, explained before in chapter two. Quality mainly is providing high quality for products and focus on product uh, and process quality. So quality, which is a competitive priority or competitive advantage, which is important for strategic uh, uh, role, uh, we uh, also uh, talking about quality for its important strategic role as competitive priority. Here we'll explain about what's called quality dilemma. Quality dilemma, uh, or we talking about uh, quality problem, uh, quality uh, conflict. Um, this dilemma will be explained in in the eyes of producer and customer. In the eyes of producer and customer. Therefore, um, if we explain the quality from the point of view of producer, producer would see that. Um, you must make sure that the product or service is produced according to the design. So your product design or service design must match your actually produced product or actually provided service. If it is matched, so you will have a high level of quality. If it is not matched, it will be a low level of quality. Also, the producer concerned that the level of cost must be a moderate one or low one. Therefore, uh, the uh, moderate cost or low level of cost will generate moderate amount or uh, uh, um, moderate level of specifications. Specifications is the one that reflects the customer wants and needs. So. The producer will put a moderate number or moderate amount of specifications from his point of view because it will be translated in a moderate level of cost. While on the other side, the point of view of uh, the customer, he says that making sure that product or service does what it is supposed to. Does what it is supposed to mean that he wants all his wants and needs reflected in, into the product. So if we have a changeable and wide range of 
want and needs, they must be reflected in specifications. So we'll have a high amount of specifications inside our product and inside our design. Therefore, it will generate a high level of cost. It will generate a high level of cost. We have a lot of amount of uh, definitions concerned to quality because each scientist see the quality from his point of view and quality is effective and play an important role at different parts inside organization and uh, can be translated from different point of views. We will take some uh, definitions about quality the first one that quality is the degree of excellence of a thing or, or for everything excellence is uh, the translation of high level of achievement or perfection so the degree the quality can be uh, or quality can be defined as the degree of a high level of achievement or uh, 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 a degree of perfection for everything. Some organizations uh, concern with uh, excellence as an important um, advantage for uh, his organization, which will make it differentiated from other competitors. So it is uh, selective for some industries and it is obligatory for other industries. If we are talking about uh, uh, automotive or fashion uh, it can be uh, a selective one you can produce a luxurious and perfect and high level uh, manufactured uh, product or car while uh, you can produce uh, a minimum uh, uh, standard or a minimum features found in a car you are not talking about perfection or high level of achievement Therefore, it is selective for these uh, 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 types of industries. While in other industries, we are talking about an obligatory excellence, which are uh, uh, important for uh, uh, the nature of those uh, industries, like pharmaceutical, like chemical. Uh, there is no uh, mistake or error. It must be just perfection and the highest level of achievement for everything inside this industry for the product itself you cannot have uh, what's called a mistaken uh, medicine or a, a, a error inside a medicine so excellence is obligatory at pharmaceutical industry and at chemical industries for example um, the second definition is the totality of features and characteristics that satisfy needs which means that the total amount of features and characteristics that found at the product itself, it will make a satisfaction for customer wants and needs. The third definition that you will find specifically inside your textbook, it's a, a, a definition for a scientist called Juran. He said that it's a fitness for use. Fitness for use, it's meaning for quality that quality level can be set identified through how the product or service is fit uh, or suitable for your for you as a consumer for your level of expectation for your usage therefore it is the quality so the degree of expectation and the degree of satisfaction will differ from one uh, customer to another according to the level of his expectation and according to the amount of satisfaction that he got therefore we must talk about uh, uh, fitness for use as a, a changeable degree for each customer and each consumer according to the expectation level the final definition here is quality of design. So quality is concerning or meaning of a quality of design. Specifically how design for product or service reflect 
the customer wants and needs. We have another uh, uh, scientist uh, categorization for definition uh, uh, to quality. Uh, this scientist called Garvin, and you will find also inside your textbook. Garvin uh, explained that quality can be explained or defined as a transcendent approach. A transcendent approach. This transcendent approach, meaning that this transcendent approach, meaning that quality is innate excellence. Innate excellence, which means that it is the highest level of achievement that is uh, determined. So you are talking about a high level for achievement is the meaning for quality. And this is, as we explained before, specific for some organizations that are working on what's called operations excellence operations excellence, that their processes, their production, their raw material, every part inside their uh, production or operation system is perfect and without any error and it is highly leveled achieved. The second definition for Garvin is quality can be defined as manufacturing, manufacturing based approach manufacturing phase approach for manufacturing phase approach to be explained is that it is the conformance for requirements or conformance for um, uh, a design or specification this is can be explained as if you have a product design and you have also an actual uh, produced product, an actual product. So the actual product, if it is compared with the uh, product design and there is a small gap or small difference, it will be a high level of quality. So it can be called as conformance. conformance is how your product design is close or equivalent to your actual product. But if you have a, a, a large or huge gap and large difference, it would be low level of quality. Another definition by Garvin that he concerned with is the user-based approach. So quality can be defined as user-based approach which means that it lies in the eyes of the beholder. It lies in the eye of the beholder, which means that each person, each person, each uh, consumer can see quality level in a different uh, degree. And this one is connected to what Joram explained before, that Quality can be a fitness for use, a fitness for use. Therefore, the user pays the approach. It's concerning that each consumer can put, can put an expectation level. This expectation level connected to the level of satisfaction that, we, that he will get from the product or service after consumption. Also, we are talking about we are talking about the product-based approach, the product-based approach, as uh, another definition by Garvin. He talking about that a product-based approach for quality is a precise and measurable variable. Goods can be ranked according to how they, according to how they score on this measure. This can be explained as each customer can put some measures, some uh, standards, 
uh, from his point of view in order to determine the quality level to different brands. For example, if you put the price, if you put uh, the after sale service, if you put um, technological level as a standard or measure for some brands inside specific industry. For example, for electronic appliances, for television, refrigerator, for television is a reasonable example. Uh, if we put a pricing and uh, technological uh, pays and after sale service as measures for quality, uh, if you rank some brands like LG as number one, for example, Samsung as number two, Tornado or Sharp as number three, so your quality level will be ranked from the highest one to the lowest and lowest one, according to those standards. And this one can be applied for customer and for producer, but at changeable standards according to the point of view of each one. The value-based approach it is also an important definition that can be used by uh, Garvin. Uh, he make what's called a connection or linkage between the value generated and price and the quality level again. Garvin in this part he explained or make a linkage among three main standards price, value generated and quality level. For example, if you have a highly priced product, you expect that this highly priced product will generate a high value level and therefore it will be a high quality level. But for low priced product, it will generate a low uh, value level and will have a low quality level. Those five definitions and categorization for definitions concerning a quality concept by a scientist called Garvin. But all in all, we can put a generalized definition which can be applied uh, for all um, scientists or all scientists are going to that quality can be the ability of products or service to meet customer wants and needs. Another important, another important model that you will have inside your uh, uh, textbook which is a bridge model bridge model concerning with customer as to have a, a, a customer uh, that is satisfied and uh, you can determine that he have a, a, an excellent uh, after sale serves and excellent value generated and so on so uh, all of this uh, in order to have a high level of quality can be achieved through two main trends. The first one is internal and the second one is external. The first side is uh, internal can be achieved through operations. You must concern with your uh, uh, operations or procedures or activities to be conformed or matched your quality standard with that those activities also um, must contain a lower level or they mustn't have any level of error or mistake uh, which is important in order to have a fitted operations or procedures or activities to your applied quality standards. So the first side that you must work on is the internal side that will be found as operations in order to generate a highly level of quality. The other side is the external side which can be found as customer. Customer in order uh, to work you must have different levels or set of different levels for uh, what's called um, expectations and perception sets 
for your uh, customer in order to have uh, a product or service design that reflect those expectation levels in order to satisfy customer wants different or changeable customer wants and needs this is very important and very excellent for fridge model to work internally for operations externally for customers for uh, having a highly level uh, quality product or service to your customer it is important to mention the importance of quality we explained before that quality is one of the competitive priorities which is so important point and also quality can um, give any company an excellent reputation also quality can giving you the chance to compete globally um, also it can be used as one of the measures for your performance however this performance is uh, organizational or operational your improved quality your improved quality or your uh, good quality level or excellent quality level will generate for you what's called a market gains a market gains that can be found at good or excellent reputation uh, a big or huge um, number produced from quantitative and a competitive price also can be found at lower costs which can be found at an increased productivity rate an increased productivity percentage and lowered rework or scrap rework or scrap is a result of mistaken operations or mistaken or uh, error at product so therefore it will be a lower level of rework or scrap and a competitive duration for warranty a competitive duration for warranty as improved the quality will generate market gains and lower costs both of them will giving you an increased level of profits Here we'll explain uh, mainly four gaps, four important gaps that may giving you a quality problems. Those four quality uh, uh, gaps, like the following. The first gap is the difference between the customer specification and uh, uh, the firm's specification of quality. You must understand that the customer's specification of quality it's a reflection for the customer wants and needs while the firm's specification of quality it's a reflection for the uh, firm's uh, uh, specifically product or service design so you are talking about the customer wants and needs and you are talking about the product or service design if there is a difference between what the customer wants and what the firms put inside this design so you are talking about a, a, a big difference and a low level of quality which will generate a quality problem also the difference between the firm's specification which is a product design and the firm's concept of product or service the firm's concept for product or service is mainly is the main uh, objective that product or service designed for or produced for for example if you are wor working on um, a low uh, cost uh, product or service as a firm's concept while your firm's specification which is the product or service uh, design uh, reflect a huge number uh, or a huge amount of features or characteristics which will need a higher cost this will make a conflict or a gap between both 
and this will generate a quality problem. This is your second gap. Your third gap or difference will be found at your firm's specification of quality, which is the firm's de product design or service design, and the actual quality, which is the actual produced product or provided service. If there is a gap between both, so you will have a quality problem or low level of quality. The final gap is the difference between the actual uh, quality, the actual product that you have, and the firm's external communication. One of the external communication is your customer. If there is a, a difference between what you produced and actually produced and uh, your customer, so your customer will reviews and unaccepted this product. Therefore, there is a gap and you generate a quality problem also. What are the results or consequences of poor quality? Number one, loss of business. You may be lost, uh, have lost at your market share, which will, which will generate a loss of your business. An increased liability. You cannot be uh, affordable, can't pay fund for salaries, for loan, for uh, dividends uh, of a share, for interest, for uh, bondholder, and so on. Your productivity will be decreased, while your cost level will be increased. One of the important concepts that you will explain uh, inside quality is the quality circle. Quality circle, by the way, is one of the important tools for quality management. Quality circle is one of the employee participation methods. It implies the development of skill, capabilities, confidence, and creativity of the people through cumulative process of education, training, work, experience, and participation. This, this is a meaningful quality circle is a group of people, a specific number of group of people and few number of group of people, uh, they uh, collected together in order to improve, in order to solve a problem. So we are talking about uh, development and creativity. Um, and they uh, will exchange the experiences and uh, skills will be improved. You are talking also about education and training and work experience um, and this is participation for different uh, functional areas at this group maybe this group is composed of one from uh, operation department marketing department finance department and as we see this group specifically is uh, collected in order to solve the problem creatively and uh, maybe for improving some uh, areas inside organization. So quality circle is one of the important tools that will be used by quality management. There are some main types of quality. You are talking about design quality, which refers to the intention of designer to include or exclude features in a product or service. So uh, this is uh, design quality, um, and it is so important to determine some features and uh, getting out other features according to the point of view of designer and according to the point of view for quality uh, in the perception of designers. Other uh, quality is the conformance quality. It refers to the degree to which the product or service design specifications are met. So the customer wants and needs and the product design, how they are met. If they are close, it is a highly degree of conformance quality. If they are uh, far away or not closed, there would be a low level of conformance quality. Performance quality refers to how the quality characteristics determined in quality design 
and improved and innovative in quality of conformance are performing in the marketplace. You translated at, at performance quality, we will explain that you translated the customer wants and needs in your product design and you already produced your product. So how this product that is improved and you, you, and you put some innovative features inside will act inside the marketplace. It will be accepted or not. So it is the performance quality. If it is accepted by a customer and performed competitively in front of other competitors, so you will have a high degree of performance quality. But if, if it is refused and not compete excellently in front of competitors, so you will have a low level of performance quality. The conformance to specification can be found according to some important steps. Number one, define the quality characteristics of the product or serves in shape of the function, the appearance, the reliability, durability, how to be, uh, live, how long will live, uh, um, how will be, can be rely on, uh, how can be recovered, how to function for the customer. This is an important uh, point that must be considered for defining the quality characteristics for a product or service. The second one, decide how to measure each quality characteristic. You put some measures to each characteristic in order to see if it is accomplished or achieved or not. If it is not, you're going back to change your quality or to uh, improve your quality characteristic that it is important for the final product uh, uh, to be uh, matching what you put in the specifications concerning with customer wants and needs. Third step, step uh, uh, is to set quality standards for each quality characteristic refers to the level, refers to the level uh, of quality which defines the boundary between acceptable and unacceptable. So here you make the match after you put your measures for each quality characteristics, you will make the match. Um, this quality standards uh, according to this quality characteristic is acceptable, so it will pass. And you will see another quality characteristic. If it is not accepted, you are returning back to make improvement. After that, you will make a control for quality against those standards. And after uh, that, you will make or find any errors or problems in order to be corrected for uh, uh, causes of poor quality. And finally, you will continue to make your improvement. In this part, we are talking about uh, a scientist called Deming. Deming put 14 points. Yes, it's 14 points. Those 14 points are important in order to have what's called quality management. But before we explain um, Deming points of view, please, we will make a quick explanation for the history of quality. Quality starts from Japan, from some American scientists that they traveled to Japan in order to implement their theory about a con new concept called quality. Why they transferred to Japan, not implement in USA, because their idea about quality is refused in USA. And it is ac accepted in Japan, and so it is a Japanese concept. One of, one of those is a scientist called Deming, and someone is called Stewart, other is called Joran, other is called Crosby. Uh, fig and poom, uh, all of those um, are uh, names 
for uh, scientists or fathers of quality. Quality starts from the concept called inspection. To inspect, to revise, to revise your um, raw material working process or final product. This inspection or revision is a manual one in order to see if there is any mistake or error or corrupted parts inside your raw material, inside your working process, inside your uh, final product. By time, an inspection becomes harder and harder because your scale of production becomes larger and larger. You inspect 1,000 will be not equivalent to inspect 100,000 units, will not be equivalent to inspect uh, a half million uh, uh, a product. So uh, you need more and more uh, um, people for inspection and need more and more time and need more and more uh, equipment to help you. All of those may be not effective as the number increase because you may skip some units. So you will transfer from the manual inspection to a software that it is used in order to help you for inspection. As we are talking about an inspection, you will talk about what's called quality control. Quality control. Quality control must start with identification of customer quality requirements and in the only when the product has been placed in the hands of customer who remains satisfied. It is start from the inspection of raw material working process and the final product that will be used in order to satisfy the customer wants and needs. Therefore, it is important. After that, scientists say that we may use some statistical tools like sampling in order to make uh, uh, just an inspection or uh, assurance or a, a revise for our product, final product, raw material, or working process. By the usage of sampling technique, statistical technique, you are transferring from quality control to what is called, you will be transferred to have a quality assurance. Quality assurance. This concept is so important to be known. Uh, quality assurance mainly is the process of preventing, detecting, and correcting quality problems by the usage of sampling, by the usage of sampling technique. So quality assurance is the development uh, for quality control by the usage of sampling technique. After that, we are not talking about just revision or an inspection. We are going to talk about a complete philosophy or concept that each member inside the organization uh, must implement. This is the quality management. So each person inside the organization must work on quality. And this is so important to be found. Uh, therefore, as dimming, uh, we explain that dimming put 14 important points in order to apply the quality management as a concept and as a philosophy that must each one inside organization perceive and believe in. So, the first standard of uh, or point for dimming is to create consistency of purpose. All workers and all people inside the organization must have the same purpose. The second one is to adapt a new philosophy, which is the quality 
philosophy must be implemented. Third one is to seize dependence on inspection. This is a meaning that you must not work on quality at an inspection only. You must make it as a concept, as a philosophy that everyone believes, not just to make an inspection as a process. For in the awarding business on price, business must be awarded on quality, must be awarded on perfection, must be awarded on a lower level of mistakes, must be awarded on high performance, and so on. Fifth, to improve constantly the system of production and service. You must improve your system in order to implement easily your quality standards. Six, to institute training on the job. You must uh, uh, um, support the development and training of your employee. Seven, institute leadership. Leadership here that you have a leader that believe in the concepts of quality. Eighth is drive out fear, which means that you must encourage your people in order to make decision and to participate in your organization. Nine, to break down barriers between departments, which meaning that you must have a cross-functional teamwork, a teamwork that's composed from different departments. Tenth is to eliminate slogans and the exhortations. It's a meaning that the only concept that all people inside the organization believe in is the concept of quality, not any other concept. Eleventh is that you have eliminate costs or work standards. Your work standard, which is the rigid one and the uh, old ones, must only the concept of quality that is found and implemented. Twelve, give people pride in their job. To be, to have the pride in your job, it's a meaning that you are believing your uh, work, that you are developed, that you are excellently rewarded. Uh, all of those are a result for a pride in your job. Thirteen, an institute education and a self-improvement program, which is excellent for any person to be developed inside his organization and educated and improving your skills. 14. Put everyone to work to accomplish it. Each one inside organization must work to accomplish the quality standard. Another topic is the quality cost. Another topic is the quality cost. It is important to explain different costs for Quality. The quality cost can be prevention cost, appraisal cost, and costs for internal failure and costs for external failure. The prevention cost can be all activities needed to prevent defect, including identifying the causes of defect, correct, corrective action, and redesign, and so on. So. In order to have a cost to all activities, to all processes, connect to prevent the occurrence of defect or error, they are called the prevention cost. Appraisal costs, they are the costs of inspection and, taste and tests. So it is inspection and tests. Uh, and any other activity that is make sure that the product needs the specified level of quality. So it's called appraisal costs. The third cost, it will be the cost of internal failure. This cost is connected to the product, again, the product before it is found inside the marketplace. Again, they are all costs that connected to problems that happened to product before this product go to market. So, it includes the cost of defects that are detected before product or service reaches the customer, such as reworking or scrubbing, def 
effective products, the cost, the cost of this will appear as an overhead which will impact on pricing strategy. So, as we mentioned before, as your error or defects increase, your costs increase, and this will be reflected on your pricing strategy. So, you must uh, successfully implement your quality standards in order to decrease the percentage of defect or error. Here, we are talking about the cost of external failure. This is the cost connected with the product that, is, that it is reached or found in the market. Already you have a defected product that it is reached to the market. So, they are the costs of defects once they have reached to the customer or consumer, including replacement to replace the defected product, product at consumer with another good one, the warranty and repair cost, and the loss of customer goodwill. At this point, is very effective one that you have a negative information about your product. It will affect your goodwill and it will be affected for a long term. You need more and more public relations uh, efforts to enhance uh, your goodwill, and you need a promotional uh, a campaigns that help you in order to enhance your picture again after these defected uh, uh, or problems found at defected pro products inside the market. I hope that uh, quality uh, topic is an uh, interesting one and excellent one. Um, this uh, PowerPoint and this record is uh, for the complete chapter, which is explained first part online and second part face to face. Uh, we decided that you will have um, this part found for you between your hands uh, online before your face-to-face uh, -face lecture because of the corona virus uh, symptoms and problems that found nowadays um, please uh, watch this one uh, any um, missing part uh, don't hesitate to ask me um, and uh, I ask a lot to keep all of you with the good health and uh, to keep you out of uh, uh, Krona, um, thank you for your uh, attention um, and I hope it is interesting one again. Thank you.